Have you ever wondered why we procrastinate even when we know it's against our better judgment? If you find yourself nodding along, you're not alone. Procrastination is a universal phenomenon, a dance our minds engage in with time itself. It's not just about delaying a task or putting off that workout, it's a complex interplay of psychology, philosophy, and our relationship with time. Let's set the stage with a little help from some of the greatest philosophers in history. From the stoic wisdom of Seneca to the psychological insights of William James, from the existential musings of Soren Kierkegaard to the profound reflections of Friedrich Nietzsche, and finally, to the practical time management wisdom of Benjamin Franklin. Each offers a unique perspective on procrastination, helping us to understand its roots and ultimately how we can overcome it. Seneca prompts us to value each moment, recognizing the true scarcity of time. James encourages us to view procrastination as mental fatigue rather than mere laziness. Kierkegaard invites us to embrace the anxiety that comes with freedom, helping us face our fear of imperfection. Nietzsche urges us to find our why, breaking free from the cyclical nature of procrastination. And Franklin? Well, he offers us practical advice on managing our time, reminding us that while we may delay, time certainly will not. These philosophical luminaries offer us more than just a glimpse into the procrastination paradox. They provide us with a roadmap to navigate it, to understand it, and ultimately, to overcome it. But don't be mistaken, this journey isn't about quick fixes or magic solutions. It's about delving deep into our psyche, challenging our perceptions, and transforming our relationship with time. So, are you ready to embark on this journey? To dive deep into the labyrinth of the mind, to explore the intricacies of our relationship with time, and to confront the procrastination paradox head on? If so, let's venture forth, guided by the wisdom of the ages. Let's delve into the wisdom of the ages and unravel the procrastination paradox. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, once said, it's not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. This profound statement from one of history's greatest thinkers urges us to reflect on our relationship with time. You see, Seneca's perspective on time was unique, especially for his era. He saw time not as an infinite resource, but as a finite one. He believed that we are all given a generous amount of time, but we squander it, thinking we have more than we actually do. This perspective ties in perfectly with our understanding of procrastination. Procrastination is, in essence, a misuse of time. We delay, we postpone, we dawdle, all under the misconception that we have all the time in the world, but as Seneca reminds us, time is not infinite. Every second that passes is a second we will never get back. And that's where the real tragedy lies, not in the fact that we have a short time to live, but in the fact that we waste so much of it. We waste it on tasks that don't matter, on distractions that pull us away from our goals, on fears and anxieties that hold us back. But there's a silver lining to this. Recognizing that time is finite can be a powerful motivator to stop procrastinating. When we truly understand that each moment is precious, we're more likely to use it wisely. We're more likely to prioritize tasks that align with our goals, to focus on actions that move us forward, to cherish each moment for the opportunity it presents. So the next time you find yourself slipping into the trap of procrastination, remember Seneca's words. Remember that time is finite, that each moment is precious. Don't let the illusion of infinite time lull you into complacency. Instead, use it as a catalyst to spur you into action. Remember, each moment is precious and deserves our full attention. The father of American psychology, William James, observed, Nothing is so fatiguing as the eternal hanging on of an uncompleted task. This profound statement by James provides an insightful perspective on procrastination. We often view it as a mere lack of willpower, a weakness we need to overcome. But James suggests that it's more than that. It's a mental fatigue, a draining cycle that saps us of our energy and motivation. Just imagine, you have a project to complete. It's been hanging over your head for days, weeks, maybe even months. Every time you think about it, a wave of exhaustion washes over you. You keep pushing it off, telling yourself you'll start tomorrow, but tomorrow never comes. This is the fatigue James speaks of, the weight of an uncompleted task that grows heavier with each passing day. Such a view reframes our understanding of procrastination. It's not just about being lazy or undisciplined, it's about the mental toll it takes on us. This perspective allows for empathy, both for ourselves and for others who struggle with procrastination. It's not simply a matter of just do it, but rather, how can we alleviate this mental fatigue? 
Recognizing procrastination as a form of mental fatigue can inspire us to find effective strategies to deal with it. Instead of berating ourselves for not being disciplined enough, we can focus on strategies that address the root cause of our procrastination. This could include breaking tasks down into manageable chunks, practicing mindfulness to stay present, or using positive reinforcement to motivate ourselves. Furthermore, understanding the mental fatigue caused by procrastination can help us cope with it better. It can encourage us to take care of our mental health to ensure that we're not only physically, but also mentally prepared to tackle our tasks. After all, our mind is a powerful tool and taking care of it is crucial in overcoming procrastination. The uncompleted task is a mental burden, but understanding this can be our first step to overcoming procrastination. Soren Kierkegaard once remarked, anxiety is the dizziness of freedom. These words capture a profound truth about the human condition. Kierkegaard, a Danish philosopher and theologian, is often considered the first existentialist philosopher. His insights on freedom and anxiety provide a unique lens through which we can examine the phenomenon of procrastination. Kierkegaard suggests that freedom, while empowering, can also be overwhelming. The countless choices we are free to make each day can induce a sense of anxiety, a dizziness, as he puts it. This anxiety can be paralyzing, leading us to delay decisions, to procrastinate, Let's consider a common scenario. You're tasked with a project and you're free to approach it in any way you choose. This freedom, instead of sparking creativity, may ignite anxiety. The fear of making the wrong choice, of producing less than perfect results, can lead to procrastination. You may put off starting the project, waiting for the perfect idea or the right moment. But as Kierkegaard would argue, this is merely the dizziness of freedom. So how do we combat this? Kierkegaard believed that we must embrace our vulnerability and accept our imperfection. It's perfectly human to make mistakes, to be less than perfect. By accepting this, we can alleviate the anxiety associated with the freedom of choice. We can make decisions more comfortably, more confidently, and thus overcome procrastination. In the context of our project scenario, embracing vulnerability might mean acknowledging that your first draft won't be perfect. Accepting imperfections could translate to starting the project with the understanding that you can and will improve it along the way. By doing so, you liberate yourself from the paralyzing fear of imperfection, the anxiety of freedom. Embracing our imperfections releases us from the shackles of procrastination. By understanding and applying Kierkegaard's insights on freedom and anxiety, we can learn to navigate the dizzying landscape of choice with confidence, reducing procrastination and increasing productivity. This is the power of philosophy in action, transforming our understanding of ourselves and our relationship with time. Friedrich Nietzsche's words resonate when we consider the cyclical nature of procrastination. He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Nietzsche, a German philosopher of the late 19th century, was a proponent of existentialism, a philosophy that emphasizes individual existence, freedom, and choice. Nietzsche believed that our lives gain meaning not through prescribed paths or societal norms, but through the pursuit of our own unique purposes. In the context of procrastination, Nietzsche's philosophy illuminates a crucial point. Often our procrastination stems not from laziness, but from a lack of clear purpose. Without a driving why, tasks can seem meaningless, leading us to delay or avoid them. On the other hand, when we have a clear why, a purpose that truly matters to us, we can endure almost any how. Tasks that once seem tedious become bearable, even engaging when they are aligned with our purpose. However, finding this why is not always easy. It requires deep introspection and a willingness to question our current paths. It also requires us to recognize patterns in our behavior that may indicate what truly matters to us. For instance, if we consistently procrastinate on tasks related to a particular job or role, it may be a sign that this role is not aligned with our true purpose. But the effort to find our why is well worth it. When we are driven by a clear, meaningful purpose, we can break free from the procrastination productivity cycle. No longer are we merely trying to be productive for productivity's sake. Instead, we are striving to fulfill our purpose, to contribute something of value to the world. This shift in perspective can be transformative. It can turn the mundane into the meaningful, the tedious into the engaging. It can turn procrastination into purposeful action. And in the process, it can bring a sense of fulfillment and joy that far surpasses the temporary satisfaction of checking off a to-do list. 
Finding our why can be the key to breaking free from the chains of procrastination. Benjamin Franklin's timeless advice rings true. You may delay, but time will not. Franklin, one of history's greatest polymaths, understood the value of time. He knew that time, once spent, is gone forever. His words are a stark reminder of the relentless, unforgiving nature of time. It won't pause, slow, or rewind for our convenience. Instead, it continues its steady march forward, indifferent to our whims and fancies. Franklin's wisdom not only highlights the inevitability of time's passage, but also underscores the importance of managing it effectively. We can't control time, but we can control how we use it. And that's where time management comes into play. By mastering the art of time management, we can align our actions with our aspirations, ensuring that we're not merely busy, but productive. So, how can we manage our time effectively? Let's explore two practical techniques that can help us do just that the Pomodoro Technique, and the Eisenhower Matrix. The Pomodoro Technique, named after the tomato-shaped kitchen timer, encourages us to work in focused bursts of time, typically 25 minutes, followed by a short break. This cycle of work and rest can help us maintain high levels of productivity without burning out, turning the relentless march of time into a rhythmic dance of productivity. On the other hand, the Eisenhower Matrix, named after President Dwight D. Eisenhower, helps us prioritize our tasks. It's a simple grid that categorizes tasks into four quadrants based on their urgency and importance. By using this matrix, we can ensure that we're spending our time on tasks that truly matter, rather than getting caught up in the whirlwind of busyness. Though these techniques are simple, they can be profoundly effective when applied consistently. They empower us to take control of our time, transforming it from a formidable foe into a loyal ally. Remember, as Franklin so wisely put it, you may delay, but time will not. Time waits for no one, but with effective management techniques, we can make the most of it. Procrastination is a universal challenge, but with the wisdom of philosophers echoing through the ages, we can transform our relationship with time. We have journeyed through time, gathering wisdom from some of history's greatest philosophers. Each one, from Seneca to Benjamin Franklin, has offered unique insights on the complex dance our minds engage in with time itself, which we know as procrastination. Seneca reminded us that time is not an infinite resource, it's a precious commodity, and we must value each moment. This understanding can be a powerful motivator, encouraging us to take action rather than falling into the procrastination trap. William James, the father of American psychology, taught us that procrastination is more than a lack of willpower. It's a form of mental fatigue that arises from the eternal hanging on of an uncompleted task. We can approach this fatigue with empathy, developing strategies to combat the draining cycle of postponement. Soren Kierkegaard enlightened us about the role of anxiety and procrastination. The fear of imperfection, the dizziness of freedom, can often paralyze us into inaction. But by embracing vulnerability and accepting our imperfections, we can liberate ourselves from this fear and overcome procrastination. Friedrich Nietzsche emphasized the importance of a meaningful why in our lives. Recognizing patterns in our behavior and finding our purpose can help us break free from the cyclical nature of procrastination. A strong why can carry us through almost any how. Benjamin Franklin's timeless advice reminded us that while we may delay, time does not. This inevitability of time passing urges us to take control of our schedules. By implementing practical time management strategies like the Pomodoro Technique or the Eisenhower Matrix, we can align our actions with our aspirations. In the face of procrastination, these philosophical insights serve as guiding lights. Understanding the psychological roots of procrastination, embracing our vulnerabilities, and implementing effective time management strategies are crucial steps in overcoming this universal challenge. Remember, time is a finite resource. Each moment is precious, and we have the power to choose how we spend it. By transforming our relationship with time, we can unlock our true potential and create a future where each moment is cherished and utilized to its fullest. Our journey does not end here. It's a continuous process, a dance with time, a battle against procrastination. But armed with the wisdom of philosophers, we have the tools to navigate this dance, to conquer this battle. Let us embark on a journey to unlock our true potential, creating a future where each moment is cherished and utilized to its fullest. Thank you for joining this exploration, guided by the profound insights of history's philosophical luminaries.